left, I went to uh, to Amsterdam and uh, yeah, and went into a squad and then we started playing music on the street. We found out like, okay, we don't want to play music people like. We just want to, you know, try to find something new. And we stopped the band. Uh, the last concert we gave was in a big squad and then after the concert, people started applauding. And then one of the guys said, I think it's time we stop. They start liking it. You know, when you have performed on a, a small stage and people are looking at you and you're all the time improvising, so you're not like playing your tune. You played already for a hundred times. So kind of like you're building a, a different kind of confidence on your own. You're going to do this, no matter what people are saying, no matter how they're looking at you. I try to make an intention, like uh, what should it be? Uh, what should it? Uh, what kind of energy should it have? Um, uh, what should the light do with the sculpture? Well, anything which just kind of it's not like a scheme. I have to tick all the boxes, but just where I am at the moment. What is my interest? Um, so I try to make an intention. But an intention, of course, comes from a bigger background, like who I am, and. Uh, what are my beliefs? What are my moral structures? Uh, you know, how do I uh, see people? So in, in that sense, because I see the whole world as a whole, you know, everything is connected and not separate. So my artwork becomes part of this whole structure. And I want it to give energy. I want not people to become sad. I don't want to react to uh, political or other situations. I want to create a new space where people can... Uh, rely to somehow touch the artwork or whatever. There's one consciousness or there's one uh, energy which is you know, giving life to everything and which is conformed to everything and which is like um, in everybody, you know, has that energy, that life energy. So that's where, that's my reference, you know, that I see that uh, that everything has the same energy. So. And if everybody would understand that, you know, then the world would look totally different, of course. In the beginning of the W139, I also ha had a lot of fight with curators and with, uh, because they thought we were trying to do something outside the art world, against the art world. And I said, well, there is, first of all, there's only one world, you know? So if I'm making art, I'm in the art world. If I try to make this or, this one is a good example. As soon as I, it starts looking like something, I just take it off and I'm like, no, I just want to discover a new space. And I also like it when people can touch it so they can kind of like, you know, with like here, that, that they can connect really to it because it's also an energy, you know, like, like the energy is going through my hands. That's why I want to make everything on my own because I have my intention. And the intention is in me, you know, that, that's the essence of, um, like, I made a note of that, so I'm going to pick that up. Yeah, you know, because it's important that I make it all myself, you know, and that's also why I hang the stuff here in the studio when it's done to, to keep the space so I can still make these big sculptures. But I, and I use the epoxy because I can lift everything on my own. So when I make it by hand, you know, uh, it's the coordination also. When I cut something, I look at it. So in my body is the intention of what I want to do. So there's millions of decisions to make, you know, like I make the cut and then I, I fold it and then I can look at it. So when I look, you know, with my eyes, my eyes are connected to my body, are connected to my intention, are connected to my whole vision. You don't have to make explicit, like uh, Thomas Hirschhorn said, you don't have to make political work because all your art is political. Because if it's good, you know, if you're really connected and really... Um, involved in the world. So you don't have to make that explicit. 
my idea for art is, you know, to make a new way for how we can live, how we can think, how, we, how people can become themselves. You know, there's so much freedom in yourself, but you have to find these spaces, and I try to encourage that. I'm all the time confronted, how do I give form to something? Mostly, I start directly cutting into cardboard. I mean, I, I make sketches in my book, but they're just more to see where my thoughts and where my uh, colors are, but not to think like, oh, I want to make this, and then transform it, uh, drawing into uh, sculpture. It has to be not the opposite of where we are, but in the new space, it has to be uh, outside of what we can imagine or what we can think of. One of the things I really like, you know, I have a lot of speakers here and Usually some uh, easy Indian music, some sita music, just you know to start the morning really in a pace. And then when the, it starts, it becomes more techno or drum and bass or whatever. No, I have a whole list of favorite DJs. And see now I'm folding in a way that you can experiment easy, you know new forms. I don't have to worry about anything. So, now I sit at the table, but usually I you know, the table is high. I like to, st to stand. It's easier to move around. And also, I don't gain that much weight. <laughs> don't get fat by sitting all day. Once a week, I go running with Jana. I mean, not really fast, but we go to the park. We run around for like... Uh, an hour, but not continuously. We walk, we run, and then we walk a little bit. We chat a little bit, then we walk again. And then we're looking forward to drink coffee. But it's a good way for me also, be, be, besides the cycling, just to track how the body is, you know? Yeah, and you have to be aware also, you know? And as, as a sculptor for me, and you know, working in this way, and what I talked about, the body, the intention, I have to be aware that if I'm not healthy, how can I make healthy sculptures, you know? It's, might sound ridiculous, but the energy I put in there, if I'm sluggish all the time and not feeling really good or whatever, you know. So if you want to give really good energy to, to people or to whatever you're doing. So so you see now, and then I have to decide like what is going to be the outside. So it goes like this and it goes like this. And it can go like this, and in here, and here, and here. Like if you see a form like this, you know, one of my dreams when I was younger was I want to have uh, floating colors, you know, like, like this, if, if it's floating, you know, through the air, that, that's beautiful. You know, that's what I'm always dreaming of. Like, that's why my sculptures are hanging. So if you touch them, the color moves through the air. Because the color, of course, that's the spirit of the sculpture, you know. The form is more the construction. You relate in a different way to a sculpture when it's hanging or when it's on the floor. You know, when it's on the floor, it, it has the same 
connection as you to the earth and when it's floating it's more like in between it's also related to uh, some other dimension in a way you also go into the sculpture you know it's kind of like easier to get the the people who are looking at your your sculptures to get them involved you know because when it's like uh, Henry Moore the whole surface is just like a defense it's yeah to you know it opens up also and in that way it opens up the energy and it opens up you know, hopefully your mind or whatever a free space the energy in a sculpture, big or small, you stay with the sculpture. One of the important things is don't fall in love with the sculpture. Because if you really, if you fall in love with it, you know, you start to focus on one thing, which is like, oh, it's really nice, it can hang like this or something. So you forget about the rest. So I have to pay attention to the whole sculpture all the time and focus on just giving, you know, from the intention, the same energy all the time. And when I'm not able to do that, then usually it doesn't get to a finished sculpture. That's the cover they use when they are renovating. They put that on the carpet or whatever, so it sticks, more or less. So then the epoxy goes over it. It can be really rough, so I don't have to cut it. And then exactly after like six or seven hours, depends on the temperature, I come back. Sometimes it's in the middle of the night because when I put the epoxy on at 12 noon, you know, I have to come back at like seven o'clock. But if I do it at six o'clock, I come back at night one o'clock and then it's still soft so I can cut it and make all the holes that's also for the big sculpture so I don't have to sand or do these ugly things so the best thing of course is like you know when I do this, what I'm doing now, I really don't know what's going to happen. So see, now it becomes more complicated. And more that you think like, I don't know what's going on. How are we going to... But then of course, this is only easy part. But a fun part, but then the color part, of course, is also really good. You know, when I started as a sculptor, I was welding and painting and using photographs, but I wanted to kind of like, also from kind of like a spiritual side, become more sensitive because I found out like, if I will become more sensitive, then my sculptures will become more sensitive, you know, and have a different effect on people. What I started to do is, without noticing anybody, just started making uh, watercolors, you know, that's different area than welding and things like that. So I would make, in one or two days, I would make these, and I did that for two years. They didn't start like this, but beginning they were a little bit more blurry and so from that because I didn't know how to combine watercolors and steel sculptures you know but I knew I trusted it I said one day it will come together because when I was doing this I was just welding big sculptures with concrete so then slowly so and then one day I found in New York I found this Kramer pigments and then I started mixing and I was like, wow, this... And of course, it wasn't that good in the beginning. Some are really ugly, but... Some I like, this I like.
and also because it has this fluidity, which can also be in the... I'm not that far yet in my sculptures, but... I'm getting closer. I want to keep my focus, but I want to keep my focus on the details. So for me it's important because I make these big sculptures you know, all the time about big movements and about uh, you know this red, this yellow. But I want to go this far that at the end, you know, maybe what... I mean last sculpture was almost successful and more successful. But if you get closer to the sculpture, I want to have more details, I want to have more things going on.